everybody, Ashley Rossi here. Welcome back to another Yogi Diver Method practice. Today we have a 50 minute vinyasa flow that we are gonna sweat together through. All right, we're working up to a peak pose of Ekapada Galanvasana, flying pigeon. So get ready to really open into those hips. If they've been tight lately, this is the class that you will need. So today you will need two blocks for class or two thick books. It can give you a bit more height to find some more length in your body. But other than that, let's hop onto the mat and get started. We'll begin on the mat today, resting in child's pose, reaching the arms out in front of you, pressing the palms evenly into the mat, grounding down and connecting with our breath. Again, to deepen your inhalations and exhalations through the nose, connecting into your ujjayi breath, the audible inhale and exhale, the slight restriction at the back of the throat. Allowing the forehead to press down onto the mat, keeping the knees wide, finding space within the body. On your next inhale, roll the body up into tabletop position. And begin with some cat-cow breaths. Inhale, lower the belly, raise the gaze, raise the tailbone. And exhale, round the spine, tuck the chin, tuck the tailbone. Inhale, Lower the belly, push through the hands, grip into the fingers, and exhale, round the spine for cat. Make each movement dramatic. Move intuitively in your body and move with your breath. Continue with these breaths, just a few more rounds. Let it feel good to you. On your next inhale, find a neutral spine, curl the toes under and shift the hips back toward the heels, lifting the knees off of the mat in a crouched pose. Pressing evenly into the palms on your next exhale, send the hips high, keep high up on the toes. And when you're ready, gently lower the heels down toward the mat. Get in a good position here, work out the feet how you need to, bend into one knee and bend into the other, drawing the heart back toward the thighs, keeping the shoulders away from the ears, relaxing the head and neck. Find stillness when your body's ready. Take a full deep breath in, and loud audible breath out. <sighs> Connect back to your ujjayi breath. And find a bit of presence. Allow the body and the mind to find stillness be comfortable in Adho Mukha Svanasana, Downward Facing Dog. Don't force your heart back toward your thighs, but let it fall there naturally. Making sure you're pressing evenly into the palms, gripping into the fingers, pressing down on the index knuckles and thumb knuckles. Be aware in your body on your next inhale, come up on your tiptoes, bend your knees, and baby step your feet all the way to the top of your mat. Bring the feet hip width apart here, and just begin to ragdoll, grabbing opposite elbows, moving side to side, having a nice bend in the knees, and with every exhale, finding a little bit more space to straighten the legs. Let the body relax. Release any tension in the neck, in the shoulders. Let your breath become deep and mindful.
Take a full breath in. And exhale, release the arms down to the mat. Inhale, half raise, flat back, gaze forward. And exhale, slight bend in the knees to fold. Let's plant the left hand in between the feet, reaching the right arm up to the sky, bending deeply into the left knee. Nice juicy spinal twist here. Continuing to open up the body, find space, keep drawing that right shoulder back. The deeper that you bend in your knee, the deeper the stretch. Exhale, release the right arm. Inhale, left arm rises this time, bend into the right knee. If you need to take a block underneath your hand to find a little bit more space, by all means, take it. Exhale, lower that left hand down. Inhale, half raise. And exhale, fold. Inhale, rise all the way up to stand, reaching the arms up overhead, connecting the palms, gazing up at the thumbs. And exhale, palms to heart center. Sama CT. Heel toe the feet together, big toes touch, heels slightly apart. Engage the thighs, slight tuck of the tailbone. Engage the core, roll the shoulders up, back and down. Allow the heart to shine. Lift the crown of the head up a little bit taller, making sure that our balance is even in our feet. Pressing the palms together. Set your intention for your practice here. What is it that you want to release? And what is it that you want to call in? When you set your intention, solidify it in your mind's eye by repeating it to yourself three times. Carry that intention with you through the rest of your practice today. Lift the corners of your mouth. Remember that this practice is supposed to bring you peace and joy. Allow yourself to laugh, to play, and to let these 50 minutes be all about you. Try to fill up your cup so that you can give to others what they may need. Begin to connect back with your ujjayi breath, that audible inhalation and exhalation through the nose. Find complete stillness in your body for a moment. Let's inhale, reach the arms up overhead, growing a little taller. Exhale, lead with the heart, fold down. Inhale, palms to shins, half raise, fat back. Exhale, fold, step the right foot back, step the left foot back into plank. We'll hold here for a moment, pushing through the upper back, pressing evenly through the palms, gripping in the fingers, drawing the belly button up into spine, engaging the glutes, engaging the thighs, pressing through the toes. Breathe in, breathe out. Deep breath in, shift the heart forward, exhale, lower down, halfway, gaze forward, chaturanga, inhale, uncurl the toes, upward facing dog, and exhale, downward facing dog. Take a full breath in through the nose, open mouth, loud sigh out. <sighs> Bring the feet together to touch and inhale, reach the right leg high, coming into three-legged dog. Square the pinky toe down toward the mat. So square in the hips. Find your stability here. And on your next exhale, bend into the right knee, scorpion open, drawing your knee up toward the sky. Maybe you can even gaze under your left armpit to find your right foot. Finding a little bit more space. And inhale. Back to three-legged dog, square off the hips once more. Exhale, knee to nose, curl and crunch. Inhale, three-legged dog. Exhale, 
right knee to right shoulder. Pause for a moment before you plant your right foot on the outside of your right hand. Find that control. You can either keep your back left knee lifted if you want a little bit deeper into the stretch, or of course you can lower it down. But either way, take little circles, any movements that feel right into your body. Again, make sure you're moving intuitively. Listen to what your body needs. And when you're ready to find stillness, if you have the depth in your body, you can lower down onto your forearms. You can even point your right toes out to the side, coming onto the knife edge of that right foot to stay deep here. If finding little circles in this space feels good, take them. You are not restricted to stillness at any time unless you want to practice in that realm. All I ask is that you connect to your breath, keep it deep, keep it mindful, and use your breath to help you find more length and strength in your body in this practice. Gently lower the left knee down, come back up onto the palms, heel toe the right foot back in between the hands, tent up on the fingers, uncurl the left toes and inhale, reach the arms high. Just a nice low lunge for a moment. And we exhale, sink the hips a little bit lower. Inhale, reach and lengthen. Exhale, sink. Let's do that one more time. Inhale, reach and lengthen. And exhale, sink the hips down. We'll stay here for three full breaths. With every exhale, releasing a little bit more tension in the legs, in the hips, in the quads, in the hamstrings. Take one more breath in and exhale, fold over the knee, curl the left toes, lift the left knee and send the right leg high to three-legged dog. Exhale, downward facing dog. Take a full breath in through the nose. Open the mouth, sigh it out. <sighs> Beautiful. Connect back to that Ujjayi breath. And inhale, come up on the tiptoes, bend the knees, gaze forward, step or hop to the front of the mat. Inhale, half raise. Exhale, fold. Inhale, rise all the way up, arms reach overhead, gaze up at the thumbs. Exhale, palms to heart center. Take a moment to notice your body here. We've worked on one side. Of course, we'll balance it out. Allow the heartbeat to slow down. Keep your mind focused. You have a purpose here. That purpose is to simply be present. Go through all of your points and inhale once again, reach the arms up overhead, exhale, hinge at the hips to fold. Inhale, half raise, gaze forward. Exhale, fold, plant the palms and step or hop back into plank. Let's chaturanga. Inhale, upward facing dog. Exhale, down dog. Bring the feet together. Let's go straight into the other side. Inhale, left leg rises. Stay here for a moment in three-legged dog. Make sure that the pinky toe is drawing down toward the mat to keep the hips squared. And on your next exhale, bend into the left knee, scorpion open, reaching that knee up toward the sky, pressing evenly through the palms. Maybe gaze under that right armpit. Can you see your toes? And next inhale, three-legged dog. Exhale, knee to nose, crunch it in. Inhale, three legs. Exhale, left knee to left shoulder. Pause for a moment, gaze down at the mat before we step the left foot to the outside of the left hand. Always find that control. Beautiful, begin to make little circles in the hips, move side to side. Maybe find a little pulse, bouncing the hips closer down to the mat. 
connect back with your breath. Let this be your practice. Whenever you're ready to find stillness, come down onto the forearms. Again, you can always grab two blocks if you need a little bit more space here. And remember, you can point the left toes out to the side, turning onto the knife edge of that left foot. And if you need to, you can always lower that right knee down to the mat. Remember as well, there is a huge difference between pain and discomfort. You should never feel pain throughout your practice, but if you do, back off. Listen to your body. Don't push it. In any yoga practice, you only need to give about 80% because we need that other 20 to recover. Let's lower the right knee down, come up on the palms, tent the fingers, heel toe the left foot in, and inhale, reach the arms high for the low lunge. Exhale, sink the hips down. Inhale, lift and reach. Let that heart shine up. And exhale, sink. We'll do that one more time. Inhale, lengthen. Exhale, sink and stay here for three deep breaths. Every exhale, release a little bit more tension. And every inhale, try to draw your heart up a little bit closer to the sky. Be dramatic. One more breath in. And exhale, let's fold over that left knee, plant the palms, curl the right toes under, lift the right knee, and send the left foot high to three-legged dog. Exhale, downward facing dog. Take a deep breath in through the nose. Open the mouth, loud sigh. Inhale, come up on the tiptoes, bend the knees, gaze forward, step or hop to the front of your mat. Inhale, half raise. Exhale, fold. Inhale, rise up, palms overhead, gaze up at the thumbs. And exhale, samasitihi. Close your eyes, check in with your body. We'll do that flow one more time on both sides. A little bit faster this time though. Slow your heartbeat. Find your belly breath. tension in the shoulders and inhale reach the arms high exhale fold inhale rise up exhale fold plant the palms step or hop back to plank chaturanga through upward facing dog and downward facing dog bring the feet together at the back of the mat take a full breath in and let it go. Inhale, let's reach. Inhale, reach the right leg high. Bend into the right knee on the exhale to scorpion. Inhale, three-legged dog. Exhale, knee to nose. Inhale, three legs. Exhale, knee to right shoulder. Step the right foot to the outside of the right hand. Come straight down onto the forearms. Take a deep breath in. And let it go. Inhale, come back up onto the palms. Heel toe the right foot between the hands. Inhale, reach the arms high for crescent lunge. Exhale, sink the hips lower. Inhale, lengthen. Exhale, sink the hips. Fold over. Step back into plank. Inhale, reach the heart forward. Exhale, chaturanga. Inhale, upward facing dog. And exhale, downward facing dog. Beautiful. We'll go straight into the other side. Inhale, left leg raises up. Exhale, scorpion open, bend into that left knee. Inhale, three legs. Exhale, knee to nose. Inhale, three legs. Exhale, left knee to left shoulder, step the foot to the outside and lower down on the forearms. Take a full breath in and a full breath out. Inhale, press back up onto the palms, heel toe the left foot between the arms. And next inhale, reach the arms high, crescent. Exhale, sink the hips low. Inhale, lengthen and reach. 
Exhale, fold over the left knee, step the left foot back into plank, reach the heart forward, chaturanga. Inhale, upward facing dog. Exhale, down dog. Take a deep breath in through the nose. Open the mouth, loud sigh out. <sighs> Inhale, reach the right leg high. Exhale, knee to nose. Gaze down at the mat, press the mat away and step the right foot between the palms. Pivot on, pivot the feet to the left, dropping the hips over toward the right leg, pointing the left toes up to the sky, skindasana. Bring the palms together at heart center and prayer hands. Maybe even try to gaze up over that right shoulder and if you have the space in your body, maybe sink the hips all the way down to the mat. Inhale, lift the hips up and shift the hips over to the left. Point the right toes to the sky, skindasana on this side. Beautiful, really working into those hips, hamstrings, working the leg muscles all together in the glutes. Let's lift up back over to the right. And this time, let's reach the arms open. Inhale, shift over to the left, reach the arms open. Beautiful. And back over to the right once more, squaring the feet toward the front of the mat, hands on the outsides of the right foot. We'll step the left foot up, just slightly, keeping a bend in that right knee. Gaze forward. And on your next exhale, begin to straighten into the right leg and fold over the right leg in pyramid pose. Staying high up on the left toes, keeping the heel off the mat. Keep drawing that right hip back, left hip forward, finding space in the hamstrings. This is a challenging pose. This is really gonna open you up and your breath is gonna take you everywhere with this. Let's inhale, half raise, step the left foot forward and exhale, fold down. Find a little bit more space. Inhale, rise up to stand, palms reach overhead, gaze up at the thumbs, and exhale, palms to heart center. Inhale, reach the arms high, and exhale, fold. Inhale, half raise, flat back. Exhale, fold, and let's vinyasa all the way to down dog. Chaturanga to upward facing dog to downward facing dog. Left leg rises for three legged dog. Exhale, knee to nose, gaze down at the mat, press the palms away and step the left foot in between the hands. Inhale, reach the arms high. Exhale, fold down, step the right foot forward just a foot or so. Keep your back raised, gaze forward. And on your next inhale, begin to straighten into that left leg and fold over your thigh. Keep pulling that left hip back, right hip forward this time, staying high on the right toes, opening up into those hamstrings. If you need blocks on either side of your feet, take them. Stick with your breath. Calm your heart. Focus your mind. I know this is intense. And on your next inhale, bend into that left knee, step the right foot forward. Exhale, let it go. Inhale, half raise. Exhale, fold. Inhale, rise up to stand. And exhale, palms to heart center. Take a break, take a breath for a moment. Wipe the sweat off. We're working into balancing poses now. So bringing the weight into the left foot. On an inhale, let's lift the right leg high, making sure that our right hip isn't popping up. We wanna keep the hip squared. So draw the right hip down if you need to. Keep the right foot flexed. Begin to straighten a little bit more into that left leg. Drawing the belly button in towards spine. Keep the heart reaching up. Lift the crown of the head a little bit taller. 
Connect with your breath, find your balance. You can let the arms hang at the side or you can bring the palms together at heart center, whatever helps you focus. But allow yourself to find a drishti, a focal point that is mo not moving and is fixed to help you balance here. When you're ready, cross that right ankle on top of the left thigh. Begin to push your hips back like you're gonna sit down in chair, reaching your heart forward, figure four pose. This should feel amazing opening up into your hips, finding space in that right hip flexor. Might even feel this through your IT band a bit, through the glutes. Keep your heart reaching forward. Try not to hunch your back over. Connect with your breath. Focus your mind where it needs to go. Find your balance. Find something to fixate on that is still. Take a full breath in and a full breath out. Inhale, begin to lift all the way back up to standing, keeping that right knee standing up. And begin to straighten the right leg, but don't set the right foot down just yet. Keep it hovering next to the left foot just for a moment. Notice all of the work that the muscles in your left foot has to do to stay balanced here. Keep engaging in your core and then set the right foot down, shake it out. Of course, we're gonna do the other side now. So let's begin to shift our weight all the way over into our right foot and on an inhale when you're ready begin to lift that knee up now let's go through our points once again keep the left foot flexed if you need to use your hand to help guide your left hip down so it's not popping up and it remains squared use it try to straighten into that right leg a little bit more drawing the belly button in toward the spine lifting the crown of your head up a little bit taller Keep lifting into that left knee. Find your drishti once more. Great job. Really feel that right quadricep muscle begin to engage. You might be shaking a little bit. Focus on your breath. If you fall out of this, that's okay. Make your way right back into it. Allow yourself to laugh through this practice, to have fun. No one is perfect here. When you're ready, begin to cross the left ankle on top of the right thigh, shifting the hips back like you're gonna sit down in a chair and maybe use your forearms to press down on your left shin. Find a bit of balance, a bit of space, keep your gaze forward. Connect back to that Ujjayi breath. And notice how this side of your body differs from your right side. Maybe you're a bit more open here, or maybe you're a bit more tight. Either way, use your breath to help you find a little bit more space and listen to your body. Yoga is all about listening. Let's inhale, come back up to stand, and exhale, begin to straighten into that left leg, but don't set the left foot down just yet. Let it hover next to the right foot Feel those foot muscles working. Find your balance. You are that strong. Stick with me. Take a full breath in and exhale. Set the left foot down. Shake it out. Great job. Take a moment to wipe the sweat off your brow. Take a sip of water or maybe to stand into Dasana and find a bit of stillness, find a bit of presence. Connect back with your breath. Begin to listen to your heartbeat. Feel your heartbeat beating in your chest. Feel your breath soften. Let 
Notice how everything around you is quiet and still. Let's lower down onto our mat and let's prepare to make our way into crow pose. So getting into crow pose, you wanna plant the palms firmly down on the mat and begin to drive the knees up in toward the armpits as close as we can get them, drawing the elbows in together. Gaze is forward, heart is forward, and maybe you can begin to lift one foot and then the other off of the mat, finding a little bit of a float. Keep drawing the belly button in toward the spine, drawing the heels up toward the glutes. Connect with your breath, stay for as long as you can, and then gently begin to lower down, maybe roll out the wrists a little bit. Let this be your playtime for a moment. So there's a purpose for going into crow pose, our first arm balance of this practice. And that's because we're setting up for another arm balance to come. And if you've noticed, we've done a lot of hip work. So with all of the hip work that we've been doing, we're really trying to find space and strength to open up for a really fun, funky pose. So the next pose we're gonna get into is called fire log pose. So this is a great one to open up into those outer hips. So we'll start by bringing the left leg on the bottom, keep that left foot flexed, and then we're going to draw the right foot on top of the left leg. So our right ankle should be stacked on top of the left knee, and the left ankle should be directly under the right knee, creating a triangle shape in between our legs. Now if you have really tight hips here, much like Cameron, and you wanna have a bit more stability underneath your knee, you can use blocks or maybe even a big bolster or pillow underneath that top knee to help find support. Either way, let's close the eyes for a moment. Take a full breath in and a full breath out. <sighs> Inhale, find a bit of length and exhale. Begin to reach the heart forward slightly and notice how your right outer hip immediately begins to lengthen. You feel that turn on right away and it doesn't take much. Find stillness. If you need to bring your hands behind your back, tented up on your fingers in this pose, take it here. It takes a little bit of stress off of you. Either way, connect back to your breath. And if it's only a millimeter at a time, find a bit of space with your breath. Every inhale lengthen and every exhale begin to draw your heart down closer to your legs. Just your heart, not your head. Let everything around you just slow down for a moment. Inhale, come up, uncross the legs, bring the feet out as wide as the mat and begin to windshield wiper the knees from side to side. Move slowly out of this pose. It can be an intense one. All right, we'll go ahead and get ready to set up onto our other side. So this time our right leg is gonna be on the bottom Make sure you keep your feet flexed. That's what protects our knees in these poses that can be really strenuous. Bringing our right leg on top. So our right ankle should be stacked underneath the left knee, left ankle on top of the right knee. And you may already feel that left hip begin to open up and turn on. Notice how the side of your body feels different from the other. No two sides are ever the same. But once again, you can keep your hands in front of you, one on your foot, one on your shin, or you can bring the hands behind you. Connecting with our breath, inhale to lengthen the crown of the head up a little bit higher. 
and exhale, reaching the heart down closer to the thighs. Or shins, I should say. I have a trick in poses where I feel really uncomfortable, where all I want to do is move and get out of them. I make myself smile because nothing is so serious that I can't handle it, especially when it comes to yoga. Inhale, begin to lean back, uncross the legs, windshield wiper the knees from side to side once again. Take it nice and slow. This should feel really, really good after those two poses. Let's cross our ankles, hop the feet back into plank. Inhale, shift the heart forward. Exhale, chaturanga. Inhale, upward facing dog. And exhale, downward facing dog. Let's inhale, reach the right leg high. And exhale, right knee to right wrist, right ankle to left wrist. We'll gently begin to lower the left knee down. And if you need to take a block, underneath that right hip, take it. Because what we don't wanna do is just drop our weight or dump our weight over into our right side. We wanna to try to keep our hips square, which means pulling the right hip back, left hip forward. I also find that it helps a lot of times to keep my hips squared if I keep my back toes curled and I push through my toes. It automatically shifts my hips and brings me a little bit more space. If you need to stay up on your palms, stay up. But if you can gently begin to fold down and rest your forehead down either on your hands or on the mat, take that pose. We're gonna stay here in half pigeon for two minutes. This is your time to meditate a little bit, to find more space, to open up, I'll leave you in silence. Just let it sink in. On your next inhale, if you're folded over, press into your palms, move the block out from underneath your hip, drop the weight over into your right hip and begin to swing your left leg forward and just shake out the legs a little bit. Move slowly, bring the feet hip width apart, bending into the knees and windshield wiper the knees side to side once again. Let the breath be calm and notice any feelings of emotion that have come up. People have called the hips the graveyard of the body where we dump a lot of emotions into. So notice what comes up and don't suppress it. Acknowledge it and then just release it, making space for something better to come in. When you're ready, let's cross the ankles and we'll vinyasa all the way back to downward facing dog. Chaturanga, upward facing dog, and down dog.
Inhale, reach the left leg high, knee to left wrist, left ankle to right wrist. If you used a block on the other side, use it again on this side underneath that left hip. The closer your left heel is into your pelvis, it will be a little bit easier for you. But if you want a bit more of a challenge and to find more space, you can simply lift that left heel up and place it closer to the front of your mat. Remember, you can use that trick to help square your hips off by curling the right toes under behind you and pushing into the right toes, drawing that right hip forward, left hip back. When it feels right in your body, fold over or stay up on your palms, whatever you choose. Either way, we're here for two minutes once again. I invite you to try to find as much stillness in this space as you can. To allow your body to just sink. To acknowledge any thoughts that arise. And to then simply watch them pass by. Focus on that Ujjayi breath. Make it loud and lengthen your breath. With every exhale, can you release tension in your face, in your shoulders, in your knees, hips, thighs, glutes? Become very aware every part of your body. This is what yoga is all about. Paying attention, listening, learning what our bodies are trying to tell us every single day. You're doing great. You're almost there. Just surrender. On your next inhale, begin to press up into the palms again. Move the block out of the way. Sink down on that left hip, swing the right leg forward, and shake out the legs once again. So I am now demoing our peak pose, Eka Pada Galavasana, also known as Flying Pigeon Pose. So we did a lot of hip openers, a lot of crunching, we practiced with our crow pose, and now it's time to fly. So the biggest thing when it comes to flying pigeon is to open up in the hips first to find a little bit more space. So Cam is trying flying pigeon for the first time. I've directed him to try on his left side first because he says his left side is a bit more open than his right. So finding figure four and then folding over his legs making sure that all the sweat is wiped off of his body. Because doing this in shorts, especially for guys, is not easy. Keeping that left foot flexed, keeping the arms inside, and hooking that left foot to the outside of that right upper arm. He's going to lean forward, keep his gaze forward, and begin to build a shelf with his elbows. So building a shelf means bending into the elbows, keeping the elbows drawing in toward one another, keeping that left knee on top of that left upper arm and hooking the left foot to the outside of that right upper arm. You've got to keep your gaze forward if you wanna to begin to be able to fly that back leg to find a little bit of a float. 
It's not always easy. Just give it a try. You can pause the video here and keep going. If you're ready to continue and move on, let's make our way down onto our backs on the mat, hugging the knees into the chest, rocking side to side. Let's find happy baby, grabbing the outsides of the feet, drawing the knees down toward the mat or into our armpits, making sure that we continue to draw the tailbone down to the mat and just let this fun hip opener pose allow you to release any last bit of tension that you're holding. Release the feet, hug the knees back in one more time. Straighten the left leg long, keeping the right knee hugged in. Reach the right arm out to the side, inhale and exhale. Draw the right knee across the left side body in this nice supine twist. Gaze can go over the right shoulder if it feels good to you. Close the eyes. Take a full breath in and exhale, wring it all out, just like a towel that's soaked in water. Inhale, hug both knees back in, rock a little bit again, and let's extend the right leg long, reaching the left arm out to the side. Take a deep breath in and exhale, twist, drawing the left knee across the right side body maybe bringing our gaze over the left shoulder. Twisting at the navel. Inhale, hug both knees back into the chest one last time. Drawing the knees in toward the nose or the nose in toward the knees, coming into a little ball, squeeze nice and tight and then gently release, extending the legs, letting the arms fall out to the side, palms facing up to the sky. Take a full breath in and a deep, loud breath out. <sighs> Seal the lips, remove the tongue from the roof of the mouth, create space in the jaw, relax the muscles in the face, let the breath be soft and enjoy these next few moments in Shavasana. Begin to deepen your breath, bringing awareness back onto the mat. Begin to wiggle in the fingers and the toes, rolling the wrists and the ankles, moving the head from side to side, reaching the arms overhead. Let's hug the knees into the chest and then roll onto your favorite side. Take a moment here to come back to the intention that you set at the beginning of practice. Did you release what you wanted? And did you call in what you desired? Gently make your way into a comfortable seat crossing the legs. We'll close class by bringing the palms together at heart center. The light in me honors the same light that resides within each of you. 
thank you and namaste.